Hello everyone, welcome to Fullerton Academy. I have a very exciting lesson for you. And I wanna thank my students in room 223 for this fabulous suggestion. The lesson today is gonna to be for you to identify the three M's on a dot plot. So we're gonna get started. What do I mean by three M? I'm referring to the mode, the median, and the mean. In this survey, 10 students were asked, how many siblings do you have? And these were the answers that were presented. So what I'm gonna do right now is to explain to you how I formulated my dot plot. I drew a number line, I identified the minimum, which is zero, and then I identified the maximum, which is four. And I went ahead and continued my number line, identifying all the numbers within the set of data. So, as you could see, there are two occurrences of zero. That means two students had no siblings. So I'm gonna go ahead and put two dots above zero. I like to cross it out as I do it because it helps to keep everything clean and nice. One, there are three ones. One, two, three. So I'm gonna put three dots. Let's take a look at two. They are two twos. I'm gonna put two dots above. They are two threes. And one four. So by doing this, by crossing it out each time we put a dot, I know that I'm gonna include all my data. So now we're gonna to try to figure out what is my mode. The mode is the most popular answer, the one that occurs the most often. As you could see, one represents the mode. And how can we tell by looking at the, on the dot plot? You could look at the height of the dots. If you notice, one represents the category that has the most dots. So because that's the highest, Point, we're going to call that the mode. So the mode is going to equal to 1. Now let's find the median. The median is the most fun because in a dot plot, you don't have to sit there and order the number from least to greatest. It's already done for you. All you got to do now is just identify the numbers that are in the middle. Because 10 students were surveyed, I know that in the middle there's gonna be two numbers that's gonna be in the middle. So what I would do now is to take those 10 dots and divide them in half, and that will help me locate my two middle number. So I know that there's five numbers to the right and there's five numbers to the left. So I'm gonna go ahead and count off my five numbers and then I circle the number below. So there's one, two, three, four, five, so I know that two is gonna be one of the numbers in the middle. There's one, two, three, four, five. So the middle number is going to be one. So what I'm going to be, I'm sorry, one and two, I'm so sorry. So the number between one and two is gonna represent my median. Now, what's so beautiful about this is that we already have a number line. So all we gotta do is identify the midpoint between one and two. The midpoint, this location is halfway. So since we have a whole number of one, it means that my median is gonna be one and a half or 1.5. So I could go ahead and place that number right here, 1.5, or you could do one and one half. Whatever you like best is fine with me. The next number we're gonna identify is our mean. I put mean as average because the thing about testing, most of the time the students learn to find the average, but when they're tested, the word that shows up is not gonna be average in some case, sometimes it's the word mean. So a lot of students sometimes forget that mean means average. So one of the things I told my students to help them to remember is in average, there's a word rage, R-A-G-E. I hope you see that. Rage, right? So when you say the word rage, it means that P 
people who are mean usually has some rage. So if you can, so it means that when I put those two words together, average, it's just a way for students to remember how to identify it. So if it works for you, then that would be wonderful. So now the way you find the mean for this set of data, you could add up all the numbers and then get the total, but I'm not gonna do that because it doesn't make sense. We have a dot plot, it's supposed to be easier. So the first thing we're gonna do is take a look at the zeros. There's two dots right here, so I'm gonna multiply two times zero, which is gonna give me zero. I'm gonna multiply three times one, which is gonna give me three. Two times two, which is gonna give me four. Two times three, which is gonna give me six. And four times one, which is gonna give me four. This is just a quick, fast way because these numbers are occurring multiple times. So why go ahead and add one plus one plus one? That is wasting time. You don't need to do all of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add up my numbers, get my total, six plus four is 10, and 10 plus seven is 17. So you know what happens all the time? Many students are going to tell us that 17 is my average. So that tells me that they have no conceptual understanding of what average means. If you take a look at my dot plot, right? When you find an average of a number, in every single category, it means that we're gonna have, every number should have, the number should be the same. Every single number should have the same amount. So you see like I have zero here, I have four here. That's unfair. So with average, every single number should be the same. So they're taking a number, maybe we'll take one from the four and increase this zero to a one. It's kind of hard for me to explain without showing you. So in my next lesson, I'm going to do a hands-on activity so you can understand. But for now, let's apply the formula. So we're going to add all the numbers and then divide by how many um, numbers are in my set. So since there are 10 students that were taking the data, I'm going to divide 17 divided by 10. So I'm going to go ahead and do so now. So I'm going to go ahead and divide 17 divided by 10. 10 goes into 1 zero times. 10 goes into 17 one time. We're going to have a remainder of 7. We can express this 7 as a fraction by bringing the remainder as my numerator. So it becomes 7 over 10. And we can also express this as a decimal. And the way we're going to do so is by putting 17 divided by 10. We're going to do the same process that we did before. But now we have, sorry about that. Now we have 7 as my remainder. So the reason why we're going to put a decimal point is because I can't take 10 things out of 7 things. So the way that I'm going to make this work, if you're thinking about money and I have $7 and I'm trying to get 10 groups out of 7, it's impossible. So what I would do now is to change my, my seven singles into dimes. Now I have a whole lot of dimes, I can actually group them by 10. So that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing right now. So I'm gonna basically say, put a decimal point here, which tells me that this 70 becomes seven tenths. So how many groups of 10 can I get out of 70 dimes? Seven of them. So that's how my answer becomes 1.7. So the average could be 1.7 or 1 and 7 tenths. The range is the easiest one. It starts with R. Most students remember this one. The range represents the difference between the maximum and the minimum. In this set of data, I have 4, take away 0, and my range is 4. So this basically concludes my lesson. I hope you enjoy it. And based on the fact that the NJ... SLA is coming up with Replace Park. I know if you take a look at this lesson and maybe replay it, it will be very helpful. If you're still not remembering the difference between the mode, the median, and the mean, I recommend you using maybe an index card like this. Put the mode on one side, put some definition, put some example, and then just go through it and just learn it. Sometimes, I hate to tell you this, you have to do the work in order to get the success. So go ahead and practice until you, till you, um, then this becomes second nature, all right?
Thank you so much. Please subscribe. Please share with your friends. And I cannot wait to see you for another episode. If you need to learn more about us, please visit our website at fullertonacademy.org or fullertonacademy.com. Okay, see you soon. Take care.